with the judges at Heat 4. So are, have you been enjoying all the heats so far? Yes, very much. Um, yeah, very much. Well, you mean the previous weeks up to yeah. this point? Yeah, it's yeah. been really, really interesting <laughs> and great to see um, young bands doing what I was doing uh, 50 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's good to just give um, up and coming bands a platform to actually go and show what they can do. And mm -hmm. with it being on like the online status of it, uh, being on YouTube, and just giving people if they can't make it to the along to the night, they're getting yeah. a chance to vote, and they're actually they're influencing what's happening on the nights as well. And I think that's good because it's not just the set people that are that are making that; it's everybody that's getting actually getting a choice on yeah. it. So I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. And I'm finding a lot of new bands out of it as well. Yeah. Which is always They're good. Really good. <laughs> yep, can only agree with that, Alan. It's great seeing such a wide variety of talent, such a broad range of people who, to say they're, on, they're really on it. Um, it's been very, very good watching the bands over the last three weeks. So, looking forward to tonight. Mm -hmm. Looks going to be another good heat. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I've been surprised. A lot of the bands, uh, some of the bands, you kind of listen to them online, you're not sure what they're going to kind of sound like. You kind of have this wee thing in your head, to, oh, they're quite good, they're not so good. Then they, when they come to live heats, you can go, wow, poof, blow you away and completely different. As Alan said, we're online votes. It's amazing how, like, one week, we, there was a decision, we actually came to a, a kind of dead heat, didn't we? You know, with the two votes, two votes, and online just swung the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it was really good, and, it, and the bands, the quality bands have been good. I think, you know, the whole competition's really gone well and really enjoying it. And I've no idea who's going to win the competition, because there's so many... Uh, different things that happen, so many changes in it, so many surprises, so it's great, I'm enjoying it. Has there been any surprises for anyone during the heats? Oh, the biggest surprise for me had to be Karma, you know, they <laughs> came out of nowhere and just they pulled off an absolute blinder, like, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I think it's it, every week it's different because you're getting different styles every time, mm -hmm. so with, with for instance you're getting Karma who's the, the kind of soft, sweet and just lovely to listen to, but then you can get, you can go on and you're getting likes of Cobalt who are heavy, sweaty mm -hmm. in your face and just giving it that. And But you're getting a mix between everything and it's mm -hmm. it's not set on one genre. Yeah. Yeah. She won't pay you. <laughs> Even with sort of some of the noisier bands, what impressed me was the musicianship in amongst um, what to my mother would have been a wall of sound. You could still hear guitar work, you could still appreciate the drummer and so on. And that's a high standard of musicianship. And to do it when you've only got like a half hour set, you know, you haven't got all day to set up with your kit. Mm -hmm. You're mixing with everybody else. So to better walk up and do that, that says an awful lot about the people that we've had mm -hmm. on the stage in front of us, yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. I think these guys have kind of said it all, mm -hmm. but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, about any words. <laughs> yeah. No, I would agree. Just the, the range of talent is mm -hmm. kind of what surprised me, I think. You yeah. Know, yeah. Um, a lot of different uh, genres going down. Yeah. And so... Cool. Yeah, I think that really. I'm more surprised that Alan's still sober. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say no. It's give give him a break. Yeah, give yeah. him a chance. No, there's just so many. He's only been here ten minutes. There's just so, so many surprising with the bands. You, you just can't kind of read for what's going to happen. It's just uh, things just change. I mean, bands had to drop out, like yourselves come in, you know, and and bands, you know, you think that were just, you know, that maybe weren't they going to be so good? Were great. And it's, it's been hard for us to make decisions as well. It's been very, very hard at the end of the day because the standard, the, the, the talent and the artists that are here today, so I'm enjoying it, but it's good. Yeah. Is there anything that you'd like to see that you haven't seen yet? Um, I, th I would like to see a little more um, polish in performance. And I think it's important to put on a bit of a show. Mm -hmm. It is showbiz we're in. And a lot of these bands do look like they could improve in that area they look like they've just sort of walked off their jobs and come down here whereas you know dress up a bit put on a bit of an act that's one thing I think is mm -hmm. we could improve on a little bit um, um, I think yeah exactly that's all part of it it's it let's call it stagecraft shall we you know. the article said about how they learnt to handle an audience mm -hmm. and really that was when they broke through was because then an audience stopped going away to the bar after the end of a song they were still engaged with them mm -hmm. and that's I think I just a generalised thing yeah the music music's great but they need to work on that stagecraft and dealing with an audience 
Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's definitely the uh, stage presence is everything. So you've got to put on a good show and, and image, having a good image, looking as a band instead of is it like somebody walking on just for the street and picking up a bass guitar. You kind of want to see the full package. You're looking for great songs, performance, and image is everything. I think you know, and and, and, and uh, engaging with the audience is, is everything. If you capture the audience, you, you've got them in your hand, you know. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. As I say, the total package. You're wanting you're wanting the full article with it. Okay, yes, we understand these are young bands and they're up and coming bands and they're working towards that and they, they will get there but you're wanting to see that kind of from the outgo as well mm -hmm. uh, I would say myself anyway but as you were saying about going to the bar in between songs shh man that's what I do <laughs> well, I mean whilst health and safety will stop it these days one of my heroes is Peter Gabriel and he had so much control of his audience that he used to go running around not just downstairs but up in the balcony during songs used to climb up speaker stacks and sing to people in the balcony then it disappear and then had reappear in the balcony and there were i mean the one that really liked them was newcastle he actually sat on the edge of the balcony with the audience around him and no security with his feet over the drop and he had so much control the audience sat back and mm -hmm. let him sing yeah. Now that he's got an audience like that, they weren't going anywhere. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes, the perfect example again. That's what you need to work on. Yeah. Cool. So you've already kind of touched on it, but what would you like to see um, the bands that we've had gone through improving into the next round? Well, for me, I would like just uh, to take what they've done already and just ramp it up to eleven. Just give us their full performance, the blood, sweat, tears, snotters, what's it all, yeah. and just give their all for the competition. It's not We're not here to judge them on just turning up and banging out a few tunes. We want to see what the band's capable of, because at the end of the day, it's all about potential and showing what they can prove to us and the audience around, what they can bring to the table and make it easy, harder for us to then go and judge yeah. who's actually the best one out of these to go through. In my opinion, yeah, yeah, and you've got to step out the box, take chances, risks, no, put it all on, on the table, and, and go for it. In this, but we, I'm looking for, I'm looking for somebody who's going to stand out for us. Because you've heard the bands now, and they went through. They need to do something different now to stand out again, and yeah. it's all to do with Emmys and everything we just said. I think that's what we're looking for. Well, I think to to add to what you just said is, when they when the bands that have gone through come back, it would be really nice to see an improvement, yeah. to see them step it up to the next level. <laughs> throughout the contest that would be great you know so by the end it's really at a very high standard and I think you know from just watching some of these shows on the TV you do see these uh, artists improve throughout the course of the show you know and I think that's quite possible for, for our, our thing as well I'm, I'm sure it'll happen because they're gonna have to up their game anyway to get, get further to on. the next final yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what we're really wanting to get is a dance number from Karma next time, so <laughs> somebody's going to have to break out and give it like this, or, you know. Karma, this guy, you've been this guy should be your manager. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough from the quiet guy. I'll leave it to the professional talkers. Uh. That's you then, <laughs> What? I wasn't listening. I was too busy thinking about Karma dancing away there. No, that's not. <laughs> so I think, is that a fair roundup of where yeah. we've got to and what we're yeah. looking for. Yeah, that's what we're looking um, for. Yeah. I know it's difficult for a band to sort of up it, but I mean, I saw last week, I saw the Roof, the Lossy Band. Mm -hmm. I hadn't come across them. They were just in a pub at a gig, but from the opening note of the opening number, they had done that. Mm -hmm. And the whole place was bouncing. They were dancing on the opening number. They didn't take three songs to warm up. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, you know, they've been around and they've got their act together, but that's the sort of thing that we'd like to see here. Mm -hmm. That just, they just took over. Yeah. No hesitation. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you all the judges. We're looking forward to tonight and the next heat and then the semi-finals. So, da -rum -ba -dum -bum. Yeah. Bye. Hi, we're here at Heat 4 for the Southwest Battle of the Bands. We're here with Danny Mortimer and his band. So first, are you excited for tonight? Freaking it. Oh. <laughs> To put it bluntly, breaking it. Oh, that's a good start. I think you should be excited. It's a good venue, chilled out time. Excited, but like I yeah. say, yeah, yeah, quite nervous. Okay, so um, explain to us what kind of music we play. Um, I would say we play melodic guitar-based rock. So it's kind of punky, but not mm -hmm. so along those kind of lines. Mm -hmm. 
Would you have anything to add to that, Ricky? A bit like Jimmy Eat World. Eh? A wee bit like Jimmy Eat World. Better. 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 Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> cool, so they're excited to hear that. So, um, how's tour going? So you're on tour? <laughs> it's going really well. It's tiring. Yeah, Very it's tiring. Um, we've been on on the go since the start of June, so wow. it's uh, been all over the place. Aberdeen, Inverness, Spadefest, mm -hmm. Belladrome, Glasgow, twice. Mm -hmm. Nairn, Elgin, Lossie. Is there any ones that stand out? Uh, Belladrum for me was quite a big one because I've wanted to get in there for a while. Uh, but the OT Academy in Glasgow is pretty cool. Yeah, that is you really know. cool. Um, Speed Fest was pretty fun as well. That was a lot. Oh, that was a good one. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you can't make there, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not used to handing the microphone. That's all. Typical singer. Typical singer. So, um, what's, what's next for your plans after tour? Um, sleeping a lot. Um, it's it's surprising how much it takes out of you. Mm. you know, so sleeping quite a lot. I know Dave's got some other stuff on the go, and Ricky's got some other stuff on the go. So it's busy. very busy. Um, I I've got no. Um, I shouldn't be tired, I only joined in the second leg of the tour, but I'm shattered <laughs> with the schedule this man's got. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping next time he tours it's a bit more spaced out, but uh, at, at Glasgow, yeah. straight out to Lossy Mouth thing was... That was a killer. That was a killer. Mm. <laughs> Still recovering from that, just a couple of weeks ago. So. Mm. What about you, Alex? It's busy working out. <laughs> Back to the day job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what's your influences? For Dave. To be honest with you, just Slayer. Just Slayer. Slayer all day. Um, I like a bit of Twilight Sad, so Shoegaze mm -hmm. stuff, so I try and put that into Danny's songs, but he's, mm -hmm. he's only sort of half on board, but <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> I mean, me, I'm a huge fan of Jimmy World, the Goody Dolls. Um, Richie Sambula and all that kind of classic rock stuff. Yeah. Aerosmith, so. Yeah. yeah. All pretty yeah. varied. Though. Last question is um, how did you find out about the sub list and how did you get into Battle of Bands? Uh, through Alan Green. Yeah. He uh, gave me a shout. I've known Alan for a while. And uh, he was like, I'm setting this up. Would you like to be involved? And I was like, yes. Mm -hmm. So, which is pretty cool. Well, so that's been Danny Mortimer. Thanks for, for watching. Over at Sublist Battle of the Bands Heat 4, and we're with Lucille. So, are you as excited for tonight? Yeah, yeah it'd be good. There's some really good bands on the bill, so yeah, yeah it should be a good night of yeah. local music, yeah. Yeah, cool. Absolutely, I would share that sentiment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, describe your music to us. Ah, oh. Gordon. <laughs> we were just asked this. <laughs> uh, non offensive. <laughs> Magnolia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A Dulux colour chart would be somewhere in the middle. Mm. Um, I don't know, like a pop pop rock. I think that's pretty. I say pop rock, but the the set list tonight definitely isn't pop rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty full on tonight, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. Indie rock. Go with that. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Indie rock works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, um, what have you been up to this year? Like, what stands out? 
Um, Bella Drum, I think, was probably the highlight of the, the year so far. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. We'd, yeah, we'd yeah, because you're at the Bella Bar, weren't you? Yeah. 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 Um, so that was really good. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that. So um, just building on that and getting out and playing as much as as much as possible, I think, for the rest mm-hmm. of the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what have you got planned for, like, the end of this year and then after? Um, not entirely sure, because we've got a new drummer now um, and a new guitarist. <laughs> 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 um, so we've kind of put the brakes on a lot of stuff, but... Mm-hmm. We'll do this, and then I think we're just going to try as hard as possible to get as many gigs as possible. Yeah, yeah I, think it, I think it's about uh, re- rebuilding. Mm-hmm. We're going to relook at some of the material and sort of uh, rethink where we are, where we want to be, mm-hmm. and um, probably be quiet for the rest of the year. Maybe one or two gigs. Mm. I aim for pushing on next year. Mm-hmm. We've had more rebuilds than Robocop. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, what are your influences? I'll pass on to you. Oh. Um. I think I've said it before. I think the reason this band is like so different, all the songs sound dif- so different, is because we've got really different influences. Like I'm like the Smiths and Oasis and kind of Brit pop kind of, and Hank Mark's Biffy Clyro, um, Gordy's into Sugar Nifty. <laughs> 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 um, it, it's a very eclectic yeah. mix of tastes, I think. Which I, I think that's why it works. Yeah. Shout out to Sugar Lifty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're still a thing, but they're cool. Yeah, I sorry, no one else gets it. We get it though. <laughs> still remember. Yeah. So, last question is: um, How did you find out about the sublist Battle of Bands? <laughs> Looking at me, are we? Um, I think we've been a member of the the sublist since it sort of was founded and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, once it w- was a thing and we'd seen it was the Playhouse now and it's w- we've never played here before we thought mm-hmm. it'd be nice to play a new venue and somewhere different so yeah. I think that's what it was really Cool, thank you, we're looking forward to hearing you tonight Perfect. so thanks for watching, that's been Lucille Thank you very much Thank you, mm-hmm. thank you. Mm-hmm. So we're here with Cryora at the Heat 4 of the Sublis Battle of the Bands. Are you excited for tonight? Yeah, we're really excited. We've been waiting for this for quite a long time now, so the day's finally come. So we're all really excited for it, so hopefully it's always going to go really well for us. Yeah, cool. So can you explain your type of music to us? Um, that's quite a tough one. Uh, mm. I guess the vague answer is just metal, but it's a range of um, styles from groove metal to thrash to bit of everything really mm-hmm. so it's really hard to pinpoint one particular sound yeah. so when people ask we literally have no idea really what to say to that cool. we can't really make up our mind yet you mm-hmm. know some people will be like oh we're a bit of thrash a bit of like seems like groove and that but mm-hmm. it's it's whatever we come up with at the time and yeah. that, that's what we play so there's a bit of everything but yeah. metal's the best way to describe it i suppose so. cool yeah so what um have been up to this year what gigs stand out for you um, since about April or so, we've had a gig almost every single month. Uh, we played at Ivory Blacks in June. We've had a few gigs at the Market Bar in Inverness. Um, we were recently at Forest Fest for, when was that, a few weeks ago now? Um, that was really good fun. But for the rest of the year, we got a few gigs down in Glasgow and Dundee mm-hmm. uh, and Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we've been going on. Yeah. yeah, so what have you got planned after all the gigs this year? Have you got any music coming out? Or? We're planning to get some stuff done, but we're we're still settling on a time to yeah. go into a studio and get anything done, really. Um, our main focus is gigs mm-hmm. and stuff. That's mainly what we're really passionate about doing right now, is just yeah. playing live. and. Um, but 
hopefully we'll get something recorded at some point because yeah. people are always asking us for stuff and we literally have like nothing it's just yeah. demos and stuff or yeah. like live videos and it just mm -hmm. so hopefully by summer next year we'll have something done hopefully oh, cool. <laughs> yeah um so how did you find out about the sub list about all the bands do you guys want to answer this or do you want me to keep answering <laughs> um i think i just remember it being advertised somewhere yeah. and they were doing it so i just signed us up and then we were lucky enough to be selected i think that was mm -hmm. literally just it it was just on facebook so mm -hmm. cool um so last question is what are your influences Ooh. um for me it's a mixture of bands it's bands such as corn mastodon uh, metallica megadeth slayer um in flames oh there's a lot mm -hmm. what about you um Similar to Stephen, I'm more newer metal, like a uh, Avenged Sevenfold, Bullet from a Valentine, uh, Trivium. So I incorporate a bit of that. Um, in terms of like voice and style, even a bit of Oasis will be in there. Mm -hmm. It's it's very weird. So um, mainly more modern metal and uh, anything that just that my voice can suit as well. Mm -hmm. I go for. I'd probably say that I'm the oddball when it comes <laughs> to influences. My biggest one's probably Nightwish. Uh, have been for years. A wee bit of Dragon Force every now and again to try and. Very into your power metal. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. These guys are more sort of thrash, sort mm -hmm. of metal. I quite a bit power metal. Something that's a bit faster. Yeah. Something like that. But it's um, I'll, I'll play anything really. Yeah. I've seen you know throwing double pedal on Bob Marley from times to times, <laughs> you know, just to see how it turns out. But it's a lot of Nightwish and Dragon Force really. That's sort of power metal that drives it. Cool. So um, good luck for tonight. That's thank been you. Cryora and uh, thank you for the interview. Thank you. We're here with Forgetting the Future, so are you excited, guys, tonight? Yeah, it should be. Oh, wait, yeah. Should I, do you want me to say all the words? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be sick. I don't know. We've never, we've never done anything like this before. We've never been interviewed. Yeah, so it's, it's cool. cool. Really relaxed. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Should be good. Can't wait. Yeah. Cool. So, can you explain a bit about like what kind of music you are? Okay, it's gonna be me for the whole interview probably. You should just get that microphone back, Jim. Um, we're just kinda like indie rock music come from like up with Thurzo and just like from like surf culture and, and there's nothing really up with Thurzo other than other than that and fields and that's it, yeah. We all kinda listen to different genres each. It all kinda comes together. Yeah. Like cool. I don't know, it just works. So, um, yeah, moving on for that, what's your influences? Well, hmm, Catfish, yeah. yeah, big influence. Royal Blood, uh, A Day to Remember, Neck Deep. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Uh, yeah it's, got, it's got to be Catfish, though. So just Catfish, maybe Art of Monkeys as well. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good. Uh, I'm more into like the heavier sort of stuff, so like a day to remember and Nirvana, all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff, and that's where the sort of heavier-ish drumming comes from. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I kind of grew up on blues. <laughs> Sorry, that's my theme song. <laughs> yeah, WWE entrance music. Uh, no, but I kind of, I was more into like, I kind of moved up to Thurzo. When I was four, and my grandpa 
It was like more blues and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't think it likes me, uh, technology. I think, they're, I think we're getting pranked. Yeah, no, just kind of, it's just everything that's just kind of come together. I think because we get told a lot that we've got an original sound, but I think that's because there's no really any other bands in Thurzel and there's no one ever really playing apart from cover bands. So we kind of just got interpret what we have kind of do what we think is right yeah so um what have you been up to this year what what's been like your standout gigs uh well we we went on a little tour with cab collective where we went to a lot of sort of different places you see like we went to remote places we went to like car car boss the night of the sky and we went to glen elk which is in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> in, in the mountains somewhere. It's like traditional music and yeah. stuff, like violins, we came in with like <laughs> And then we played the Ironworks as well. Max missed that one because yeah. he went to Spain, oh, but <laughs> but it was a really cool gig to do. It was yeah. one of our biggest anyways, probably. Done a couple, oh, yeah, couple of hometown that. gigs we in that as well. But oh, we released an EP, yeah, we did that, yeah. Um, yeah, we released our first EP. We, we, we had recordings up that we recorded with Edwin Collins in Helmsdale and that was really cool but it was like really old um, our like first like songs we ever wrote and stuff and yeah and then we just recorded with a guy called Andy Williamson and Thurzo and it's just like a four track EP because that's all we can afford and then we're just like <laughs> you know not gonna lie on a budget uh, <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah we just uh, released that that went quite well uh, we've got uh, over 3,000 streams on Spotify now, which is doesn't yeah. seem like a lot, but for us, it's amazing, you know. Just Especially it's ours, yeah, because it's kind of it's really cool because Spotify, you can like you get an app for it's the artists, and it's like it can show you where people listen to your music, and you can be like, ah, oh, cool, I'll play a gig there, because we we sh we've not really no, the furthest kinda, we've like ventured Inverness, is Thursday, we just kind of yeah, go up and down that road and that, but yeah. Yeah, cool. So what have you got planned for next year? Cool. Another EP, hopefully, I. But um, I don't know. Just kind of wing it, don't we? <laughs> just <laughs> see what happens. Yeah. So, um, how did you hear about the sublist? Yeah, yeah, it was kinda like, oh, well, we've got a couple of friends in bands that were on like yeah. the sublist chart, and we first saw that and then we heard about all the stuff that they were doing thought we'd try and get involved yeah. in it and well it, it managed to happen you know it's yeah it was kind cool. of just like everywhere on the facebook and that it was pretty cool so we just like the jump on that get involved because it was really cool with uh, the music charts and stuff like that it's really cool because we up with ours it's just like really rural and there's there's no there's there's no music scene really because they had like venues but I kind of got, they all kind of got shut down for like restaurants and... Apart from the one Mr. C. Yeah, we, that's <laughs> plugged. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, and that was cool because it's just like a wee kind of grungy, sweaty wee pub, but it's like... Uh, well, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be yeah, today because, I yeah. mean, they let us have our first gig when we were all, what, like 16 yeah. or something like that. It's like the only really that's place we play. I think the only other uh, option you have up there is kind of renting a place and then selling tickets for that, but... Everyone up there is lazy and they don't go out there. Not, not much of the pubs are interested nah. in the original sort of music. No, not really. Yeah. Okay. So, um, last question is what do you hope to get out of tonight? Just, I don't know, just get our name out there a bit. That's all we ever really want. It's, yeah. That's all we're into and just the more people know about us, the better. You know, that's, that's I think all it's like about, really. If we ever get like offered a gig outside like Cave This, we always just kind of take it because we're like. We just kind of love gigging and stuff and writing new music and then seeing what people think of it and just like shifting it and... Oh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Just yeah. the, the best feeling is when someone else enjoys your music, so yeah. I mean, that's what we do it for, you know? We, uh, we, we printed out loads of CDs and then we're like, we're like oh, we'll sell these, we'll get loads of money from them, yeah! And we've just been handing them out for free because we're too soft <laughs> and we don't like asking for money because we're just awkward teenagers <laughs> and that, but... Yeah. Uh, the more people have it, the better, though. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Do you want to say? I don't know. You can kind of say. He doesn't say it. He's just. Bassist. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yours were sounding great in sound check. So, look forward to hearing you tonight. So, that was Forgetting the Future. <laughs>